In today's video, we're going to see if we can use a microwave to cook food with the door open. Guys, we go through microwave ovens faster than most people, I would say. <laughs> this is our newest model. There's nothing particularly special about it, except it puts out a thousand watts of power, which is in the high-ish range. There are more powerful microwaves. There are certainly less powerful microwaves. Microwaves, it's a form of light. Visible light is a spectrum of frequencies. That's how fast the light is moving in a wave up and down. As you go up, you get faster and faster, and microwaves get down to about one millimeter. However, the size put out by microwave ovens is approximately 12 and a half centimeters in the waves. Here's the basic idea. We're going to see if it's possible to dismantle a household microwave oven to remove the door and allow the microwaves out into the world. Can we still cook with it? And how far away do we need to stand to be safe? So we're being very careful with the Faraday cage that we use when we are cooking food in a household microwave. We're going to try and bypass all of the safeties. <laughs> we're going to take the door off and try and put these safety mechanisms in their places to get it to run anyway. And then we're going to try and cook things with the microwave without a door on it. Let's get to work on trying to take this door off and then hopefully making the microwave still work. And I think I'm gonna go at this with an angle grinder and just try and cut right through the hinges. <laughs> oh look, it just lifts off the hinge on this side. No angle grinder required, good call. Okay, so my first question right now, I mean obviously it's gonna think that the door is open, but is it gonna register that there's like an error? Hmm. Nope, just door. Door. Just thinks the door's open. Which cool. it is. It, I mean, it's not wrong. The door is slightly more than open right now. This does not protect you from microwaves. That. This. You metal. wouldn't need this. You could microwave with this entire piece removed and still be just as safe. That is what's protecting you. Okay, um, now that we know the parts of the body that are dangerous, you two should move, and I'm just gonna hit the quick start. Let's, no. Yeah. We're gonna unplug this for a moment while no, we set up not. the safety. No. <laughs> okay. Plug us in. Beeping. Beeping's good. There's no light on inside. That's a good sign. So I think, at this point, we have defeated the safety mechanism. Go. I don't know how many times we're gonna have to say this today, but don't do this. <laughs> don't do this. Don't do this. Technically, okay, you did the math. So I was talking about how five milliwatts per square centimeter is like what the FDA says is safe. This is a 1000 watt microwave. That's 1 million milliwatts. Uh, I calculated this opening to be approximately 763 square centimeters, and that gives us 1310 milliwatts per square centimeter, and microwave power follows the inverse square law, so the farther away you go, the weaker it gets, and it should be that at approximately 40 inches, you're down to 0.13, not even five milliwatts, but 0.13 milliwatts per square centimeter, so unless, I'm, unless I'm doing this math wrong, which <laughs> Someone correct me down in the comments, but yep. by my measurement at 40 inches away, we should be at like 1 20th what the FDA says is a safe level. So with 40 inches right here, I should be safe. So I think where I'm going to stand is over here. <laughs> That's my plan. I'll be, yeah, I'll probably be over there too. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a couple pieces of chocolate Kind of balance them like that. And we're just gonna start with this in the microwave. So mm -hmm. it's in the same place as usual. We just are gonna have no door on it. As we always say, there's absolutely no way this could go wrong whatsoever. All right, I think I'm gonna set this for 30 seconds by hitting the plus 30 seconds button. Okay. And I'm kinda gonna book it. All right, ready? Yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> it seems to be running. We don't know if it's radiating. Yeah, let's see if in 30 seconds, if that don't chocolate bar. Don't do this. This is great. Oh my gosh, this is great. Here's the other thing to consider. The Faraday cage doesn't just 
keep them from getting to us. It bounces the microwaves around to help your food cook. We've essentially just removed most of the reason that your food cooks. Mmm. <laughs> okay, that's probably gonna be our main problem, I bet. We figured a control was needed to see how long it actually takes for chocolate to slump and melt yeah. in a regular door on microwave. Oh, so 30 seconds, this it one- just sort of fell. The plate got enough warm for it to slide down, but the chocolate itself doesn't feel very warm yet, so let's give it a little more. All right, that's a minute and a half. Cool. And our chocolate is- Pretty melty? Pretty runny. It's not completely liquid, but- Gives us an idea. It's melted. All right, so let's get this going again. Let's go for two minutes. Yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> Huh, we appear to have <laughs> an We're un just unbothered escaping. chocolate bar. The, the plate feels a tiny bit warm. So what we are doing is basically just dispersing microwaves into the room, not harming ourselves. We're just, it's just, okay, thought, other thought. I just wanna hold the door I do. in front of it. Just I leave do. it there. Cause I really do think that what we've done here is not- It's just all the heat's getting it. It's not bouncing around enough. Yeah, let's just do that. All right. Now, while we did put the mesh back in place, it's still, I mean, that it would be considered a severe leak if that was a microwave. So we are staying over here. We're still gonna stay over here. We're never going to be near that microwave when it's on ever again. <laughs> Just to be safe. Sounds different. Hey! Okay. Melty, melty. Okay. So. We're just letting heat escape. That's yep. the problem, is too much heat gets out of the microwave. But it is obviously heating. Yeah. The microwaves are still flowing. We've got a melted spot of chocolate. Most mm -hmm. of it's not melted, They're, but some of it is. It's not having the chance to melt and bounce yeah. should around. We, should we do another one in just five minutes or something? And I'm gonna put one outside of the microwave, turn it on for five minutes and leave the room. <laughs> So Nate is already over there. You ready, Mark? Boys are moved. Moved, yep. Okay. We'll be over here for seven minutes or so. So update, Mark is filming from the floor and Nate's hiding behind the workbench. <laughs> I'm up here. This is normally where I sit if we have a project that's taking a long time and I'm just waiting. I sit on the workbench. So I actually have a perfect view of the chocolate bar. So far, nothing. We'll see. Oh, it's, it's like <laughs> melted to the top of the microwave itself. I wonder if that's what kept it from going anywhere. Or is it just because the microwave got warm? So I'll just do another five and a half. It'll be a full 11 if it goes. Okay, you can melt something outside of a microwave, but it sure is less efficient, guys. It's a long time. I do want to try one more variation of this. Okay. I want to see if we can like mm -hmm. block off more of the door so like it has nowhere else to go. So instead of letting the microwaves bounce out, we are actually just blocking the microwaves with the chocolate itself. You ready for this? Yep. So we got a minute 15 into our chocolate wall before what looks like the bottom of it broke off. It looks like it melted at the line of the metal 
So everything fell through. So we're going back to Nate's plan with the chopsticks, balancing everything up again. We'll turn it back on and run. Also, interestingly enough, when we had that going, we had a memory problem on this camera. The tiny GoPro turned off, and Mark's camera, which we had sitting right here on the tripod while we were much further away, also shut off. Okay, so our microwave has finally decided it's too angry to continue, which is probably a good thing. The chocolate bar taped to the ceiling melted. No shocker there. These guys actually did okay. Oh, there we go, okay. I think some of this may have been the Hershey bar that kind of fell into them. Our chocolate bar on this side absolutely slumped. I think we hit about four minutes before it just finally just gave up. These chocolate bars though, they are. So it got warm. Yes. They are flexible. Chocolate, well, chocolate does do this. this chocolate. chocolate does do this. Yeah. But this, this, it melted. It was outside the microwave and it mostly melted. I'll be honest, I was hoping it was gonna be more powerful than that. Yeah. That we could have like a chocolate bar float. Out, right? yep, same here. It was odd that our cameras were flickering and so of course we were not willing to be any closer, but this makes me happy. We can let it cool down and try and turn it on again later. It might be able to be used for a future video, but I think we kind of proved our point right here. It doesn't do a whole lot of cooking outside the yeah. microwave box. That door, it doesn't just protect us, but it also helps bounce the heat around so much. It just didn't get very warm in there. Just a couple of feet away, the microwaves have dispersed enough that it's really not gonna do any good. It can still harm you, which is why we are staying way away from it, but not to the degree that you might believe with some, you know, urban myths. And anecdotally, it interferes with some electronics. Yeah, uh, We haven't figured out exactly how it was doing that. But, but some things nearby were not working as they were supposed to. So, there you go. Guys, it's not all we know. We've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.